So it's experiment time. In front of me, I have a four-year-old Asus laptop. Uh, to be honest, even when I bought this thing, it wasn't the most powerful thing in the world. It's a Pentium processor, uh, dual core, 2.1 gigahertz. And the reason for my video today is I'm going to take a look at the forced Windows 10 update in action and see how this computer copes with it. So without further ado, we're going to open it up and just to be on the safe side, I have my original recovery discs that I created the day I bought it four years ago. First thing you should always do when buying a new laptop. So, open it up. And in case anyone's wondering, it's the Intel Pentium B970. It actually it was 2.3 gigahertz, not 2.1. I'm thinking of my old desktop. So 2.3 gigahertz. But if you watch my channel, you know I get stuff wrong all the time. So we're powering up. Yeah, my desk is a mess. I still have a DVD in there, actually. Resuming windows. Oh, yeah, I guess I left it in sleep mode. Now, while we're waiting for this thing to start up, uh, this computer in its current state is probably suffering from the worst case. Uh, yeah, you can see me there in the screen. Probably one of the worst cases of Windows creep I've ever seen. So, let's zoom in here while I enter my password. Adjust this upwards. Okay, so now we're on Windows. This particular install has been running for about three years. I don't need Apple software update. Not responding. Yeah. And in terms of the average life expectancy of a laptop, it's usually about three to five years, and at four years old, this thing is definitely approaching the end of its usable life. Well, to be honest, it's not that usable. Um, I originally, when, when I bought it, it was an emergency replacement because my MacBook at the time was just not up to doing much of anything and it was 400 bucks. So it's now much later. 1052 to be exact and uh, the main reason is when I uh, logged in I saw this get the update was scheduled to go through automatically tonight at 11 p.m. so I figured I would just leave it and do or just kind of experience this the way people that have gone through the automatic update have experienced it so right now it's counting down and at least it's got a pop-up screen. I know uh, from hearing from some users, they uh, they didn't even really get any warning. It just tended to do it in the background and then the computer restarted. So I'm not going to restart an upgrade now. This will be from the experience of, say, someone who just left their computer sitting and then came back to find that there is a different operating system on it. So uh, rather than wait for the whole Six minutes and 51 seconds. I'm just going to pause this video and we'll be back. And we're back. And just a little over 10 seconds, our automatic upgrade is going to begin. Here we go. Three, two, one, zero. Preparing to begin upgrade. Now see how long this hangs for. Okay, so the computer just restarted. It took, I don't know, about eight minutes. Configuring update for Windows 10. So keep in mind, we're looking at this from the perspective of the average non-tech-wise or tech-oriented, if you want to put it that way, 
consumer or computer user or whatever you want to call them. So again, not knowing this is, this was going to happen, you would have just left your computer probably on and it decided to upgrade itself. Now, of course, I could have halted this, but uh, this is more an experiment than anything else that I'm actually running. So we'll see what happens next. Now we're about 12 minutes into the update, and so far the configuring update for Windows 10, whatever that means, if it's supposed to be the full OS or just a pre-update, but we're at 70%. Okay, so 50 minutes in, hey. And uh, the update screen just made it to 100%. And now the computer's restarting. And yeah, that DVD is still in there. Loading files. Our first sign of Windows 10. The newish Microsoft logo. And then the upgrading Windows screen, which we've seen several times before. Well, I have. Um, so once again, picture yourself in the mind of a regular consumer that didn't know this was going to happen, and you come back to your computer to this screen. And there have been a lot of people that have actually aborted the installation of Windows partway through the installation of the upgrade and have permanently corrupted their OS's and that's not good and if you have no recovery disk that's really not good. And we now made it all the way at 8% and this laptop is slow. Uh, like I said I, I think a lot of the issue is Windows creep but we're going to have to see how long this whole upgrade procedure takes. I have a feeling I'm going to be here for a while. And when I'm talking about uh, people that were taken by surprise to turn on their laptops to find a whole new operating system. Well, one of them was actually my father, who was kind of in a complete panic. Um, but his computer, it's Toshiba Satellite. It's, I think, a third generation i5. So, I don't know. It actually sped up his computer after I showed him how to use Windows, after he'd finally figured out how to use Windows 8. So we're still at 8%. And we're now about 45 minutes in. It was at around 30% and now it's restarted again. Isn't this exciting? Yeah, you know it is. While I'm doing this, you see there in the corner, that's the husk of some of my old computers. That's my old media center. That thing's just dead. Uh, I'm just going to take the hard drive out and basically recycle it. That's my 2009 pavilion which I used as a secondary computer, so I'm going to plug that back in. I might actually try seeing how this forced update goes on that, because it's, well, three years older than this thing. So, we're starting. And now we're at the hour mark. It's definitely taking a while. 57%. Files have been copied. Installing features and drivers, 60%. Knowing that you're probably all dying for an update now, it's 12.04, and the computer just restarted again. This really would have been a lot faster if I would just take that DVD out of the drive. And an hour and 13 minutes in, we're finally at 99%. I have a feeling it's going to be at 99% for a while. Actually, I was wrong. It was only about 10 seconds. Welcome to Windows 10. Enter in password. Well, I don't suppose I have any choice but to accept. I suppose I could decline. I just don't get to use a computer. It can network. It's already connected to this network. Okay, I did pick a network. 
Oh lordy. Here we go. How can you be taking longer than usual when you're right next to the wireless modem? Oh, well, we're off to a good start. New apps for Windows. Yeah, whatever, next. And we're restarting again. Very slowly. We're doing something. Oh, here we go. Hi. We've updated your PC. And in the case of many of you, you had no idea we were doing this. So, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Well, I should hope so. We've got some new features to get excited about. Well, honestly, I don't think Edge is really that exciting. His friend, Snowball Blue, the USB mic, is very excited about these new features. We've made some tweaks to make Windows even better. Well, you did bring back the start menu, so I'll give you that. An hour and 21 minutes in, and apparently we'll be ready soon. Start. It's time to get excited. Oh. Here's my backup utility. Okay. So, desktop is still there. There's my weather network icon. Which is not working because apparently I have no internet. So this would be my first glitch. Find my network and uh, see if I can log back in. Okay, so, so far with my forced Windows 10 upgrade, the internet no longer works, or my wireless connection no longer works. Ready to go, Windows. Suppose I could reset the modem, but I have my uh, my custom PC right next to it, and it's online right now. And smart TV is working. Uh, sigh. Verifying the problem is resolved. Why do I have very little hope? Yeah, I know. Keep doing your thing. Looking for problems. Oh, Lord. So right now I'm just restarting the computer. and see if maybe that resolves the connectivity issues. I don't have the angry little arrow. So we'll break in edge. Oh. oh, it's back. Okay, so honestly even though, yeah, it is a little bit faster on boot up. But from the perspective of someone that doesn't know what they're doing and had their computer just update because of the connectivity issues, which I've never actually had with this particular modem, uh, at least not when I was running Windows 7 on this laptop, I have to call this a fail. Because if you don't know what you're doing and your computer just updated on its own, kind of like this one did, you're going to end up having to take this into a tech shop and pay money to get it fixed, probably. At least that's what most older people would do. And not that I'm stereotyping older people, but they are probably the people most likely to have issues with this. Okay, so just a short update. So I rebooted the modem, and now apparently the wireless works. In that case, I guess it wasn't quite the fail I thought it was, but, well, still kind of frustrating. Well, I guess I have to give it a pass. Let's see if this works. So, 
vest. We got recovery. How long does it actually take? We have Windows Explorer and Windows 7. Took a while. It's not quite as slow as it was. So yeah, it is faster. How much hard drive space I've used up on this thing. Yeah, I got 91 gigs free. Okay, now that I'm sure I've bored everyone enough, if you're still watching at this point in this video, well, congratulations, I'm sure you're the only person that's actually made it that far, so, as always, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a good day.